Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nuddle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible. We would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So this is the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating a quite famous yet commonly misunderstood appraisal technique, or rather two techniques, which are the simple payback period and its discounted counterpart. The discounted payback period that also takes time value of money considerations into account. First things first, let's specify our example and it will be a relatively simple one. We will have a six year project with a thousand pounds initial investment, so minus a thousand is our initial cash flow, and then we would have positive cash flows of 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, and 700 in the next six years, respectively, and the discount rate is 15%. The payback period and the discounted payback period have one uh, key requirement to be applicable. For the payback period to be applicable, the project needs to break even in accounting terms, so without time value of money considerations, which means that the sum of cash flows needs to be positive for the payback period to be applicable, or at least non-negative. So we can check that by just summing up the cash flows, and as they sum up to a positive figure of 1700, the simple payback period is applicable. For the discounted payback period to be applicable, on the other hand, we need the project to break even in present value terms, or on the other hand, our net present value needs to be non-negative. For that, we just need to calculate the net present value, calculating the discount factors, as usual, one over one plus the discount rate locked to the power of the year, and then apply it throughout the cash flow schedule. Here we can see, for example, that uh, at 15%, uh, one pound uh, six years from now is worth 43 present day pence, quite straightforward. Then we can discount our cash flows by just multiplying the cash flows onto the respective discount factors and sum those up to arrive at the net present value of 551 pounds. As it's non negative, discounted payback period is also applicable. This is a quite uh, useful and essential check to apply before we proceed with those calculations. To calculate the payback period and discounted payback period, we need to consider cumulative cash flow and cumulative discounted cash flow. So for the cumulative cash flow, we need to uh, refer to the starting cash flow for the first value. And for cumulative discounted cash flow, we need to refer to the first discounted cash flow. And then we add up the cash flows proper onto the previous value of the cumulative cash flow or cumulative discounted cash flow, enforcing it throughout our schedule. Now, for the simple payback period, we need to have a look and see what is the last year when the project has not yet broken even, meaning we need to see what is the last year when the cumulative cash flow is negative. And having a look here, we can see that year three is the last year with a negative cumulative cash flow. At the end of year three, the cumulative cash flow is negative 100. So the project definitely does not break even in three years, but it definitely breaks even in four years, as the cumulative cash flow there is positive 400. However, we need some aggregative figure. Uh, and for that, we need to make some assumptions. And the most common and the most uh, intuitive assumption to make here is that this particular cash flow in year four is uniformly spread across year four, which means that to calculate the payback period, we need to add on top of three, that's three years, the proportion of the year, the fraction of the year that we need to wait until the project breaks even, until we accumulate enough cash flow to arrive at the value of zero. For that, we need to calculate the absolute value 
of the last negative cumulative cash flow and divide it by the value of the next incremental cash flow. So in this case, incremental cash flow in year four. That yields the value of the simple payback period of 3.2 years. For the discount payback period, we need to um, analogously look at cumulative discounted cash flows. Here we can see that due to time value of money considerations, the project takes longer to break even in present value terms. In year four, at the end of year four, the project has not yet broken even. The cumulative discounted cash flow is minus 50. So it's four years, we need to add something on top of. So we have the absolute value of the final negative cumulative discounted cash flow divided by the following incremental discounted cash flow, which is the discounted cash flow in year five. That yields a value of the discounted payback period of 4.17 years. That means that our project breaks even in 3.2 years in accounting terms and in 4.17 years in present value terms. However, these calculations are not automated, which means that if we change our assumptions, let's say change the assumptions regarding the discount rate, so let's say we increase it to 25%, this calculation would not longer be correct because our project, in present value terms at least, does not break even in five years. It actually takes more than five years to break even. Whereas if we reduce it to five years, we see that our project actually does not take four years to break even. It takes less than that, as at the end of year four, our cumulative discounted cash flow is still positive. So to account for that, uh, we need to automate the procedure of calculation somehow. And this is easy to do by combining the max ifs function and the VLOOKUP function. Let me show you how to do that. So for the simple payback period, we need to find the maximum year. So we apply max ifs to the uh, column with years, where our cumulative cash flow is negative, And that is year three. For the discounted payback period, we need to perform the same procedure but referring to cumulative discounted cash flows. And we see that here at 15%, it correctly identifies the final year with a negative cumulative discounted cash flow at four. But if we reduce it to five, it's three years. If we increase it to 25%, it's five years. So it correctly accounts for the changes in the result corresponding to changes in assumptions. Now, we need to use the VLOOKUP function to correctly map our last cumulative cash flow and the next incremental cash flow. So for that, we use VLOOKUP and the respective year. And for the cumulative cash flow, we need to look at the fifth column of our table and we input zero for exact match. Whereas for the cumulative discounted cash flow, we need to look at column six and again, zero for exact match. For the next incremental cash flow, we need to look not for the uh, number of the year, but number of the year plus one. So this is the next incremental cash flow. And incremental non-discounted cash flows are in column two, whereas incremental discounted cash flows are in column four. And finally, the calculation itself is the same. We add the absolute value of the last negative cumulative cash flow divided by the next incremental cash flow. That allows us to calculate both the payback period and the discounted payback period. However, here, as we change our discount rate, for example, let's say increase it to 25%, the discounted payback period is now correctly reflecting the final year with the negative cumulative discounted cash flow. We can see the difference in this calculation to highlight the error in the initial approach and the flexibility of the automatic approach. Whereas if we reduce it to 5%, we can see how much closer the payback period and the discounted payback period become. 
And this reflects a very uh, intuitive property of the discounted payback period, as the uh, greater time value of money considerations are, the greater is the difference between the payback period and the discounted payback period. Because if the discount rate is zero, the two are equivalent, quite intuitively. Uh, finally, if the discount rate is, say, 50%, then the discounted payback period would not exist, because at 50%, the project does not break even in present value terms, alluding to the initial requirement I discussed at the start of the tutorial. Finally, let's discuss the applicability and limitations of the payback period and discounted payback period. The most common application of those is when uh, time horizons and planning horizons are quite well defined, and we have got an explicit requirement for a project to deliver value and break even in a set number of years. That's where we'll look at those um, appraisal techniques by default. Again, the discounted payback period is preferable to the payback period as it includes time value of money considerations, so economic profit versus accounting profit. Another uh, application is as a second or third um, order appraisal technique uh, when liquidity is uh, quite a pressing issue. For example, if we've got a set of projects that are equivalent in terms of their value generation capacities, let's say we investigate uh, capital rationing and profitability indices of projects are equivalent, then we can use a payback period or preferably discounted payback period as a tiebreaker. However, as the first line of defense in investment appraisal, uh, payback period and discounted payback period are not the best, and you should refer to other more fundamental concepts such as the net present value, for example, instead. And that's all there is about the fundamentals of payback period and discounted payback period and their Excel implementation. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make this any further suggestions for videos on business, finance, or economics you'd like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and support us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.